Hey everybody, welcome back. We have Gary's block on a milling machine and we're just getting ready to take a, a cut. Uh, I put my straight edge on this and straight diagonally uh, side to side lengthwise uh, most places I could get a 3000s feeler gauge under there which is way out of spec and there are places I can get a 6,000th feeler gauge in there. So why this was never decked is beyond me. I mean it's, it's clear that it's in bad shape. But this is the first step um, before I could do anything else. I'm going to try, like I said, to, to set the guides after I deck it. And we're going to check for cracks. And then we'll have a nice surface to... Uh, make a nice square bore with our boring bar uh, once we have this flat so hang in there we're gonna mill this next and uh, we'll see how much we have to take off to uh, to get it cleaned up okay guys I'm just taking a whisker of a cup just to see what the what the deck looks like uh, it's gonna take a while to go across there but, uh, yeah, you can just hear it ticking, and we're going to see what this gives us, and then we can make a one or two thousandths cut after we see what we got going on. But we're going to let this cruise right across there and see what we got. Okay guys, we're finished with our first light cut. I don't know if you can pick it up in the camera, but so I'm going to mark it here. You see we took a, quite a bit of material out of there. Well, well, not a lot. This is just our light cut, but we took material out of that area. This area was high. We got a little bit right there. We got a little bit around here, here, and we cut some through there. I'm going to try and get the camera off here and show you. Hang in there. Okay, so we started cutting. Nothing, nothing high spot there started tickling some material off of here and all the way out now don't forget your gasket has got to make a seal and looking at this it was going to be very hard to do uh, especially with that copper seal this, this head gasket would have blown um, in very short time like I say, I had areas I guess 6,000 feeler gauge under. Um, so that kind of gives us a road map and we know how bad the block was. So now we're going to set up and probably take a, probably do this in 1,000 cuts. Um, we don't want to hog the material out of there. I'm, I'll take another 1,000s. We'll take a look at it. But um, you see, when you don't deck things, uh, you, you just, you're going to have trouble. And like I say, I can't imagine somebody looking at this block and not decking it. But we're going to make it right, and uh, we'll set up for another cut. Okay, guys, I'm three thousandths in to this deck right here. We're still not cleaning up over here. We're not cleaning up over here. We're cleaning all the way through here, and then nothing across the back. So... That's where we're at right now. Uh, we're probably going to have to take the full six. You know, I was saying I can get a 6,000 feeler gauge. We may take the full six. We may take a little more. Um, once we get it off the mill, I'll show you the more cracks that are popping up. Uh, we've got a pretty long one here, here, and here. 
and a lot of people think those, those cracks in those areas aren't too bad. Uh, trouble is if you leave them, this crack, uh, with this area being weak, it can jump and go that way. This one could jump and come this way. Uh, and this one can come right into the valve seat. So we're going to have to address the cracks. Uh, we've got three so far. We'll see what we, uh, we turn up as we go. So I'm going to set up for another cut. I'm not going to bore you guys just showing you back and forth with the, with the, uh, with the block. But we'll set up for another cut and uh, I'll show you what it looks like. Okay guys, I just showed you the nickel standing on the block while it was being milled just to show you the importance of a rigid setup. Um, <clears throat> you saw the nickel was just standing right up. Uh, the milling cutter was cutting the block. And uh, I just knocked it over so that you'd know there's no tricks there. It wasn't glued down or anything. Uh, you need a rigid machine if you want to get a decent cut. Uh, we're cutting perfect. We're at five and a half thousandths right now. We almost made it all the way through. I think you can see this corner is still not being cut. So we're going to have to go another, uh, probably another thousandths or so. Um, on this final pass I'm gonna speed up the cutter just a little bit and slow down the feed uh, to get the finish that we want but uh, it's coming along and one more cut should get us to where we want to be so we'll get after it and I'll show you what that looks like when it's done okay guys there's the finished decking I wound up taking exactly seven thousandths off this off this block so you can imagine what a hard time that gasket would have had sealing uh, <clears throat> I get a lot of contact from guys who say they keep blowing head gaskets uh, keep getting coolant into their oil and I always ask them if their head and their block are flat and they never know um, you will have gasket problems if you don't start with a perfectly flat deck. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pop the head on the middle too. I'm gonna I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna give that a light cut as well because I, I don't want this, this engine is going out to South Dakota. I don't want any trouble out there. I want them to have a long lasting engine. So I'm gonna give that a light cut too. But this took seven thousands to clean up. Um, like I say, you know, just with a, with a common straight edge and a feeler gauge, I was getting six thousandths under there in certain areas. So there's no reason this should have not been decked. Um, we do have a crack here and here, here and here. Um, they're not in the worst spots, but we do want to stabilize them. So 
we're gonna go after those you know we'll do something with those um, I might pin it I'm not, I'm not sure um, we'll dig deeper into those and see what the, exactly what they need but um, uh, it doesn't look like there's any uh, cracks in the cylinders or anything like that so but we'll, we'll pressure test this anyway um, just to be sure uh, but right now uh, I'm gonna take a light cut on the head and then we'll go after these valve guides see if we can get those to the right uh, set at the right height and uh, if we can that's good if not if they start cracking and breaking we'll have to take them out and put new guides in there but um, we'll go after a little bit at a time but um, this is what a proper uh, block should look like after it's decked Hey guys, I got the head on the mill. Uh, I am five thousandths uh, deep into this head right now, and I still have a tiny section that I can't clean up. I checked this real quick with the um, straight edge and stuff. It didn't look too bad. It appeared flat, but you don't always get right to the very, very end with the straight edge. So I said, well, I'll put it up on the on the mill take a light cut and I took a lot of time setting it up you can't just flop a head on a mill and expect it to be you know flat um, so I have it shimmed in two corners to make it um, the distance from here to the to the deck correct now, like I say I'm five thousandths in I didn't even touch that yet just started tickling the end so there is a big belly right there perfect place for uh, a head gasket blowout uh, coolant leaking and stuff like that so I'm gonna take another one and a half maybe hopefully I'm gonna clean that up and uh, won't be long before we got a uh, high compression cylinder head here with the amount I'm taking off but um, we're not hurting anything and I'd rather have a flat head than, than leave a space like that. So we're just, uh, just going to chip away at it and keep going until we get it perfectly flat. Okay, guys, got the whole cylinder head cleaned up. And I have to make one more pass. I don't know if you can see it in there. You see the, the marks from my cutter. When that cutter head gets dull and cast iron is real tough on those those carbide bits uh, when they get dull uh, I don't like the finish and I'm not happy with the finish here we did clean up um, again I'm 11 thousandths deep right now and I did not think it was going to take that much to clean this head up but I'm going to go another thousandths I'm going to clean up all the um, stuff I don't like in here and that'll be a perfectly flat head. Um, this is why I always throw them on there and I take a light pass just to see where we're at. And for some reason, from here to here, we had a terrible low in there. I don't know why, but um, perfect place for trouble. So, one more time through here and we'll be all set. Okay, guys, there it is. It's off the mill, and our finish is perfect. So between this particular cylinder head and the block, we had to remove a total of 20 thousandths of an inch. Um, <clears throat> 13 on the head. Uh, just, just over 7, uh, maybe 7.5 thousandths. So we're not going to have any issues with gaskets or anything like that. I was surprised, again, at the head was so bad. Um, the block we saw was a mess but uh, there it is and 
with both of them being perfectly flat if we had to use a copper gasket this is the only way I would feel good about it I don't like using those copper gaskets on um, stuff that hasn't been flattened and I always use Felpro gasket sets anyway because I, I like them the best and that's what we use on this particular engine but uh, a lot of guys are starting to use the copper ones and if you do and you want to go that route make sure you have uh, perfectly flat surfaces okay guys we're heading over to the press to uh, see if we can get those valve guides adjusted properly the head is finished the block is finished and I didn't get as far as I wanted to get today um, had to do some work on the military wrecker here had a little bit of a hydraulic leak in the pump here it's just an o-ring in there that kinda keeps that from leaking so I had to take that apart quick and get that fixed because uh, I gotta move the steam engine pretty soon and I put my air pack in and I'm just waiting for a hand to bleed the brakes but um, now nah, we can't see it I'm not gonna go under there again uh, I was under there quite a while getting the air pack in uh, that is in and we'll have brakes on this tomorrow or as soon as I get a hand with the brakes and then we can get on to moving the steam engine um, got some guys coming to help me with that I'm not sure when we're doing it uh, trying to get this truck ready and I got the gin pole truck ready to go so we should be able to move it easily but uh, I had to get that stuff done so uh, we'll pick up on Gary's engine um, tomorrow and uh, I've got Mark's engine moving pretty good now and Hal's engine is starting to go together I will show you that in the next video as well so thanks for watching everybody and uh, I'll catch you on the next video.